in the year 2016 god will cause you to make impact this will undergo rearrangement tonight and every mistake we have made it will be corrected by god destiny shall be rearranged you shall be a man of impact you shall be a woman of impact in the rearrangement Can you jam out together for Jesus tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Those hand clap cannot bring you a victory. Those hand clap cannot bring you a testimony. Hallelujah. We thank God for tonight and uh, being the third night of prophetic takeover. Tell somebody I'm taking over 2016 in 2015. Everything is set. We want to acknowledge the presence of the general basia of the ministry and for our mama can you put on that for my father let's celebrate the grace of god hallelujah we thank god for this evening there are some faces that you see that their the faces themselves just let you know what is about to take place and tonight we have one of such faces here but before we bring the guest speaker here we have one one man of god here that wants to acknowledge can you help me to acknowledge Reverend Kabna Ampong from Mamlaka Outreach Ministry? Man of God, you are very welcome. God bless you very much. Some time passed in this nation when you see a face like Afarijan, you know that it's time for elections. And for the past years in, the, in this ministry, anytime you see the face of this great man I'm about to introduce, you know that we are at prophetic takeover. And I know that tonight, God, by the grace upon this great man of God will bless our life and transform our lives. There are some people that when you encounter them, you don't forget the messages that they preach. And one of them that we can't forget is for the first time. Tell somebody for the first time. And I know tonight you have an encounter that you will never recover from. Church, can we be on our feet? And let's welcome a man that God has used over the years and is still using over the years. Can you help me to welcome Apostle Echo Ansa Adri? He's the same God who was there for you in the midnight hour. He's the same God who was able to wipe the tears away. He's the same God who was there for you in lock and ward. He's the same God, He's Jehovah, my great everyone. Tell me what you're giving up on God. Tell me what you're giving up on me. Tell me what, tell me what you're giving up on God. Hold on. Tell me 
Jesus, jam those hands, jam those hands, jam those hands together for Jesus. Somebody celebrate God, celebrate God, celebrate God, celebrate God, celebrate. 
Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Thank you, Father. You can humbly have your seats. We thank God for this wonderful evening. I thank God for the life of God's servant. A man I have grown to love and to cherish and admire. Somebody was asking me, why do you like talking about this man so much? I told the person, it's because you don't know how deep he has touched me. When somebody touches your heart, you have nothing to do than to talk about the person. This is a man that is selfless. This is a man that wants all to be blessed. This is a man that the one he has, he wants to give out. This is a man that is on the heart of God. I don't need to talk about him because we are all witnesses of what God is doing through the life of this man. I call him my prophet. There are some prophets in Ghana, I don't joke with them. If you touch them, you touch me. Their battle is my battle. Their problem is my problem. And he's one of them. His wife is also my own baby. I don't joke with them. I pray to God always and I ask God that Father... Make this man a voice, not only in Ghana, but in the nations of the world. Amen. There is something people don't understand. No matter how David tried, he could not build a temple. No matter how he tried, he could not. There are some things fathers, no matter how they try, they cannot. It is only the son that will come and do it. So a wise father will pray that the son will do better. Because when the son does better, the glory rubs on the father. Stand to your feet and honor this man of God. Prof. God bless you so much. From the crevices of my spirit and the presence of these witnesses, I want you to know that till death do us part. Not because you are here. Please sit down. Not because you are here. I know a lot of people. Something happened. I was to leave for Israel. I said, I'm going to test these young men of God. So I call them one by one. I say, listen, I'm embarking on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. I'm waiting for your own sponsorship. Okay, Papa, I have heard you. The next second, the phone is off. Okay, Papa, I've heard you. The next second, the phone is off. And the phone was off for all the duration I stayed in Israel. But I called this man. I said, I'm waiting. He said, Papa, I am bringing it. And to my surprise, he came with his wife to my house and brought his own contribution. And at the airport, he still sent somebody that go and meet this man. As he goes to the Holy Land, let him use this as offering. Among all the people I called, he was the only one that did not put his phone off. Why, now tell me, why wouldn't I talk about him? Why wouldn't I fight for him? Why, if you try him, you try me. Wow. 
and I love him. God bless you so much. I want us to appreciate Reverend Kwabna Ampon Kutimboa. A great man of God. Doing so very well in the United Kingdom. London especially. Good to see you, Prophet Odonko and the wife. Looking beautiful and handsome. <laughs> Prophet Vincent Bannerman and the wife. Good to see you. Selom, good to see you. Prophet Abraham, you got married. You did not invite me. <laughs> I saw it on Facebook. It is an error that cannot be rectified. It can only be pardoned by an extreme sacrifice. <laughs> Good to see you. I listened to this man's message on YouTube. I told myself, if you are not careful, they will wave you off. So you better sit up. Let's appreciate all these men of God. And one of my sons, Prophet Francis Teria, I came with him. I've known this man. My wife was the one that converted him. At that time, I did not know my wife. So, he came to be my son and then one day he told me that, Papa, there is a woman I want you to meet. I said, as for me, I'm a spirit. I don't like meeting women. Because women had so much broken my heart that I didn't have any heart anymore. So he pleaded with me and I met the woman. When I met the woman, I behaved as if I had not seen her. But my left eye was critically examining and assessing. So through him, I met my wife. God bless you so much. I love you. I love you. Two of my sisters said they will be coming. I don't know if they are here. Adrian, are you around? Adrian is not around. Audrey is not around. Okay, probably they are on the way. Well, tonight I want to speak God's mind very briefly. And then we will draw the curtain on tonight's program. I closed the meeting very late last night, around 1 a.m. Drove myself to Accra. When I got to Kaswa, strangely, my vehicle decided that I would turn into a tortoise. Instead of speeding, it was crawling. I managed to get to Accra. So, please bear with me. I want you to close your eyes wherever you are. Pray and ask God to speak to your heart tonight. Ask God that, Father, I need a word from you. Let your word come to build me up. Let your word come to transform me.
grant me clarity of speech, Father. Let the door of utterance be opened unto your man servant. Hide me behind the cross. Speak through me to your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I briefly want to talk about a message I titled Destiny Rearrangement. Destiny Rearrangement. There was a time in my life I used to pray a particular prayer and I kept praying that prayer until one day God told me to stop praying that prayer. I used to cry to God because I saw colleagues of mine excelling and doing well in ministry, buying all the good things in life, having all the results they could get and it looked as if I was slacking and I was being stagnated in life. And so I went to God in prayer and I said, Father, change my destiny. I kept praying night and day. Oh Lord, change my destiny. God, change my destiny. Until one evening God said to me, you are praying in vain because I cannot change your destiny. It came as a surprise to me because there is nothing God cannot do. So for God to tell me I cannot change your destiny, you can imagine my shock and my surprise. And so I asked God why. Then the Lord said to me, before you understand what I'm saying, you first of all need to know what destiny is. Then I said, Lord, what is destiny? God said to me that destiny is all that I have called a man to do and to become. Destiny is all that I have called a man to do and to become. So if you are praying and asking me to change your destiny, then you are telling me to change what I have called you to do and what I have called you to become, which of course I cannot change because before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I set you apart. This is what I have called you to do and this is what I've called you to become. So you cannot ask me to change your destiny. But what you can ask me to do is to rearrange your destiny. Then I asked God why. God said to me, in our quest for success, in our quest in achieving our ambitions in life, there are choices we make. There are decisions we take. There are steps we take. There are alliances we form that some way, somehow alter our destiny. It throws our destiny off track and off course. And so if you find yourself in that position, the prayer you need to pray is that I should rearrange your destiny because when I rearrange your destiny, I bring it back to the original purpose and intent that I planned for your life. Some of us have entered into marriages that have affected our destinies. Some of us have studied courses that have affected our destinies. Some of us have befriended some people that has affected our destinies. There are some decisions we have taken. But tonight, God is going to take us into the surgical room and perform a caesarean section on our destinies. Listen to me. When a woman is due for childbirth, the normal way for the child to come is to come with it head but sometimes the child decides to come with the leg other times the child decides to come with the buttocks when it happens that way it is called a breached birth and when that happens the only way to save the life of the mother and the child is to carry them to the theater and then perform a 
overseers on them. Our destinies will undergo rearrangement tonight. And every mistake we have made, it will be corrected by God. Any decision we took, any choice we made, any step we took that some way, somehow has altered the course of our destiny. God sent me to come and tell you that there is going to be a rearrangement of our destiny. First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4 from verse 1. The sons of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Kami, Her, and Shobal. And Riah, the son of Shobal, begat Jahath. And Jahath begat Ahumai and Lahat. These were the families of the Zuratites. These were the sons of the father of Etim, Jezreel, Ishma, and Itbash. And the name of their sister was Hezeloponi. Let's jump to verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. The story of Jabez is a story that has gained so much attention and popularity throughout Christendom. I am yet to come across a preacher who has not preached about Jabez before. I believe that the story of Jabez has traveled far and wide. But there is something I find very fascinating about the story of Jabez. Because I believe that if somebody is very popular, then a lot of things must be said about him and a lot of things must be written concerning the life of the person. If you look at somebody like David, entire chapters were devoted to his activities. If you look at somebody like Peter and Paul and the people of old, entire chapters and books were devoted to them. But this particular guy who is popular and a lot of preachers have talked about him, surprisingly, the Bible devoted only two verses to his story. And yet still, this guy has gained so much attention and so much popularity. How come that a lot of things have not been written about this guy? How come that a lot of things have not been said about this guy? I sat down and I began to question God and to ask, why is it so? Because the people of old that are popular, there are things written about them, so many things. But Jabez is popular, but the Bible devoted just to verses to the story of Jabez and the Lord said to me it is because life is not about how much is written concerning you and life is not about how much is said concerning you but life is about the impact that you make they devoted just two verses to Jabez but the guy's story has made so much impact my prayer for you tonight is not that God will bless you my prayer for you tonight is not that God will lift you up. My prayer for you tonight is not that a particular door will open for you, but my prayer for you tonight is that in the year 2016, God will cause you to make impact in the name of King Jesus. When they are calling for men of God, that your name shall be mentioned. I pray that through your life, your family history shall be rewritten. I pray that through your life, your family's name will be held. I prophesy over your life that grace will locate you tonight that as we step into the year 2016 you shall be a man of impact you shall be a woman of impact that financially you shall make an impact economically you shall make an impact in ministry you shall make an impact I pray that you will not just exist but you shall make an impact impact 